scores 15 in the third. CJ scores 13 in the fourth. Ball game, probably season for the Oklahoma City Thunder. And as you yeah. said, go ahead. No, I mean, yeah. I'm saying you, yeah. you're exactly right, Skip. In a situation where you should have gone into the half up at the bare minimum six to eight points, maybe even 10, 12. Maybe. You have you them on the ropes and on the down. Run. Yep. Yes, you find yourself down two points because three quick ill-advised shots and a turnover, which is unacceptable. No, it's just unacceptable. So in this series now, he's 29 for 80 from the field. That's 36%. It's just horrendously bad. He'd been doing it all year, but against Portland, you can't get away with it. He's now seven. That's of, seven. Skip, yeah. That's seven. That's that's seven percent lower than what he shot in the regular season. And I thought if you wanted to make a name for yourself, you play better in the postseason than you do the regular season. So he's now in this series seven of 23 from three. That's barely 30%. It, it's just it's just horrendously bad. You you can't overcome it. Paul George, I don't know how bad his shoulder or shoulders, plural, are, sure. but he's wearing the, the things on his shoot, you know, the kinetic tape. Yep. So yeah, he kinetic, ices, yeah. you know, he ices on the bench when he's out. I have no idea. He, he actually had a pretty good game, but he missed a lot of key shots too, and they didn't get any help from their role players while Aminu just went crazy for Portland. Portland just looks like the better basketball team. So here's my big picture takeaway for Russell Westbrook, and I've never brought this up on the air because he didn't give me a chance to, but he's about to lose some clout in OKC. He's about to lose... Mm -hmm. Uh, a little bit of his, so to speak, hall pass mm -hmm. that he gets with the media because he has been all-time surly and disrespectful, especially to their local media, but really to any media, because Oklahoma City management has let him get away with it from the start. Huh. The management in Oklahoma City, because it's sellout every game, and it's the only big game in town, obviously, versus OU football. Sure. That's sort of, it's just OU football. And the Thunder kind of eclipsed OU football there for a while. Mm -hmm. And okay. so, so management's thinking, we don't really need the media. Well, guess what? I'm going to say, again, if they get closed out in five games, starting next year, they're going to need a little media. Because some people in Oklahoma City, my hometown, are going to say, I, I don't know if I'm going to put up with Russ behaving like that. And listen, Barry Trammell, Skip. let me let me just say this real quick about okay. Barry Trammell. I've known him for, I don't know, maybe 40 years. Wow. Um, he's really a good man. And he's he's really a, a smart, tough, all business journalist. He does his job as well as anybody does their job by the book. Okay. And all he does is ask reasonable questions after games. I, I've known him for years. He, he's not a shock jock type. He doesn't go for the throat. He's not really that controversial. He's very down the middle. He's very objective and honest in his approach. And for Russell to try to show him up game after game after post game is, is pretty humiliating to me, not, not only as a journalist, but for their franchise and for my hometown. So maybe this is going to be the end of it because last night he, he went so far as to say, well, that's a good question. What do you think? You know, like, like he's going to no, hand no. off. Okay. Rude. Yeah. Go ahead. But, but Skip, if you, may, maybe you can give a little insight. Do you know what caused this conflict between this journalist and Russ? I have no idea. Brian Curtis um, of The Ringer wrote about this back in 2016 and did a sensational inside look at this. It, it just started from the start because that's kind of Russ's demeanor and attitude is he's always he needs a chip on his shoulder. And so the biggest chip was the local media. How can you guys ask me objective questions? How can you not love me? How can you doubt me in, in the smallest way? Mm. And from the start, the PR staff, and it came from the top, from the ownership, let him get away with it. They let Kevin get away with it, but Kevin's much more accessible and open to the media. Russ just hated the media from the start. And the more triple doubles he had, the more he was allowed to hate the media. And obviously that first group right. with both Harden and, and Kevin in it, they were the darlings, not only the town, of the state, of the region, so you could get away with it. But I don't know any one thing that Barry ever did. I don't think they've ever had a conversation before. Barry laughed in that 2016 article about, I, don't, I didn't even know he knew who I was. So I, I don't know that he even knows Barry Trammell's name. He just knows his face. And if he ask, dares to ask an objective question, then Russ is going to shut him down with next question. 
And the thing I found interesting the, uh, uh, the other night, I think it was Friday night, Skip, he done brought Paul George into this bull jive. He got Paul George talking about next question. Come on, man. Y'all got, listen, stop being so petty. You, you won a ball game. You're pounding your chest. Everybody, you know, uh, you saw uh, Schroeder doing his hand like Dame Lillard. It's, it's, it's Schroeder time and all this. <laughs> carried on. Hey, no, nah, no. Nah. You step to the podium. They ask you a question. You answer the question and keep it moving. You yeah. guys are playing Terrible. Now, Paul George, he wants to be known as playoff Paul. He about to be known as first round exit Paul because that seems to be what's happening a lot lately. Yep. And allow me to say that I really loved what Steve Kerr said. This is before yesterday's game. He was commenting on Russell's behavior mm -hmm. off Friday night's game. But Steve Kerr said, I think it's dangerous for the league. And he went on to uh, expand that. We're in a good place right now as a league. We're very popular. Fans love the game, social dynamic, the fashion. But more than anything, they love the connection they feel with the players. Sure. And the only way you're going to feel that connection is through players speaking to media. When you were a Bronco and a Raven, you were all time, right? Spoke you spoke to the media. Yes. I think it served you well, and I think it served your teams well. It did, but Skip, that's Skip. I have a job to do. Let me go do my job, play. Okay, they have a job to do. Okay, Shannon, what happened in the game? Why were you unsuccessful today? What happened? To okay, you just answered the question. They're not asking you personal. Well, Shannon, what's going on in your home life? No. They're not asking Russ no. personal questions. No. They're asking them questions about what they see on the court. But another thing, Skip, is getting out of hand with his behavior. Dame is trying to reach down to pick the ball up. He's <laughs> kicking the ball. The guy has the ball. He's slapping the ball. At some point in time, somebody need to turn around and fire on him because he's getting, oh, I'm Russ Re Russell, and I got a chip on my shoulder. I play like this. Okay, you're going to catch the right one at the wrong time, and then you watch. Well, all this can be forgiven if you win, and when it's time to win the most important game. Win what? Win anything. Win, a, win one series. No, wait. No. Win one series. If by Kevin, the way, Steve, if KD, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Steve Kerr go ahead, go ahead. Uh, summarized the whole thing by, by saying one of the reasons people like the league right now is we have a lot of great players, really good guys who handle themselves well. So don't kill that. Mm. Does Russ fit into really good guys who handle themselves well? I, he's never fit you know, into that mold. And we've let him get away the, oh, with it. Right, but this old school guys like it, Skip, because that's the way we played in the 80s and the 90s. We weren't all friendly. We weren't all this. But your ratings weren't like it is now. Mm -mm. The popularity of the game is growing even more. There's a time and a place, and I, I'm not saying to everybody every time a guy makes a basket, the opposing team guy slaps his hands or give him a pat on the back. But I think sometimes Russ goes over the line. I think more times than not, he steps across the line. Why must you kick the ball if the guy's trying to pick it up? Why must you slap the ball out of his hand? Remember, you got upset when you tried to call a 20-second timeout and Patrick Beverly undercut you. You got so teed off. You slamming the scores table. And you've had a beef, a gripe with uh, Pat ever since. Now you see how it feels mm -hmm. when you do his stuff that's unnecessary. Yep. You felt what Patrick Beverly did was unnecessary. A lot of these other players feel the things that you do are unnecessary. But we've been seduced, Skip. He had 42 triple doubles one year. He had 30 last year. I think he had 32, 33 this year. Oh, look at the triple double. But when he doesn't get that triple double and you go through the weeds and you start looking, man, dude shot 5 of 21. He's averaging 21 points a game in this series, but it's taking him 20 shots to get it. That's not good. Mm -hmm. And he's turning the ball over five, six times a game. That's not good. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? He's just been doing that all year. Mm -hmm. But you like because she's all dolled up, you forget all the other things that come along with that. I, I do agree with that. I'm going to remind everyone, the biggest reason Kevin Durant left Oklahoma City was he believed that Sam Presti, the GM, had basically anointed Russ the alpha, the one to Kevin's 1A, that he, that. Presty wanted the ball in Russ's hands in all the big late game moments. And Kevin just couldn't live with that. And I couldn't blame him for that. So he chose to not only leave, but obviously to join forces with a juggernaut. And the rest is history. Right. And we're going to talk about that juggernaut here in just a little bit. But what's amazing to me is that 
Russell actually hasn't gotten better over time. He's gotten worse because his shooting has gotten yes. worse. And while most, yes. you know, great players, the Magics and the MJs, they, they Magics and MJ too, Magic and Jordan, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> there you go. Um, but but they, they taught themselves a shot and it just kept getting better and better. Then they taught themselves a right. three-point shot and it got better and better. And now Russ seems to be getting worse and worse. He is shooting his free throws better in this series, but he was 66% from the free throw line this year. So I, I, there's nothing left to defend there unless he could figure out a way to go win a game at Portland in game five. And I don't see what it. About, what about this, Skip? What if his field goal percentage from the floor, his three-point percentage, his free throws is suffering because the triple-double is so important yeah. to him. Yeah. He has to trace, chase all these rebounds would agree. all over the court, yeah. and he's exerting so much energy, maybe he doesn't have the leg to